G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle and uh, here today to talk about my Lord of the Rings and uh, Hobbit collection. So, why am I talking about this? Well, I'm actually a massive, massive fan, like you wouldn't believe, of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. I have props from the movies, um, including coins from like Smaug's Treasure Hoard. I've also got books, novels, that kind of thing. I have an original set of the Red Books that go back to the 1950s, believe it or not. Um, from my grandmother, and I've pretty much read all the lore. I have Unfinished Tales, Silmarillion, the works. Read it all, love it all. Um, I think it's just fantastic. It was one of my first sort of real passionate uh, fluff loves. And at one point in time, probably around the year 2003, 2004, I was more in love with the Lord of the Rings and the game and the war than I was with either 40k or fantasy for Citadel games. So, models wise, I pretty much have no Hobbit stuff at the moment. I've got very little Lord of the Rings stuff at the moment, except for two factions, Mordor and Gondor. And I'll talk more on that shortly. This book you're seeing here, my original Lord of the Rings Return of the King rule book. This book, which is in very good condition, as you can see, it's not all bent and damaged. I bought this in 2003 in the starter set with, um, what I did was I went in with a mate and we each bought a starter set. He kept all the Orc stuff for Mordor, I kept all the Minas Tirith stuff because I'm a massive, massive fan of Minas Tirith. Um, I just think they're the coolest fucking faction, probably because I think that full plate mail is just gorgeous, but I also love the lore behind it, around the Jewel Kingdoms, the Fall of Osgiliath, the Kin Wars, the works. Really good stuff in there. So, original rule book. I also have Legions of Middle Earth. Not a game that really caught me, but you know, it's, it's here, I have it. Uh, a lot of my other books are at my mother's house, but since she lives about 150 k's away, I'm not exactly going to pop over there this afternoon to pick them up. This is from the Hobbit strategy battle game, as you can see, and this is the Desolation of Smaug expansion. Just to give people an idea, this is what a rule book looked like in 2003 to update the rules. This thing it's about a quarter of the thickness is what an expansion looked like for The Hobbit. Because that's how little Games Workshop cared to actually work on the IP, which I think is disgusting. The beauty of The Fellowship of the Ring was they did the Fellowship rule book, then they did the Two Towers rule book, then they did the Return of the King one, and each rule book was a proper rule book with everything you need to know. It brought all the characters over from the previous rule book into the next one and updated the rules, adjusted points, values, whatever was needed. Fantastic. The last book that I've actually got here today is the Siege of Gondor. This was either the first or second expansion that was brought out for Return of the King and is one of my personal favourites. In fact, let's see, if, see how my memory is. Um, if you look on a couple of different pages in this rule book, this is live on camera so I hope I don't embarrass myself, but you can actually see, if I find the right page, here we go. Just in here, this is page 157. There are Citadel Guard standing around in the back of, maybe I can bring it in closer. Citadel Guard standing around in the image. What makes this interesting is they were not released in this book. They were actually miniatures hidden in plain sight that came out in this book. So, just a little bit of trivia. Do forgive my volume, of course, and my voice because I'm doing this on a camera. I don't have a um, shotgun mic or anything plugged in at the moment, so it's pretty echoey, I'm assuming. We'll find out in post. What I've got here is a whole bunch of my metal and fine cast stuff. And I'm just going to go through a bit of it now just for shits and giggles. What I'll do first is I'll pull out my oldest models. First of all, original Elendil. Bought it back in 2001. So that should give you an idea of how old that one is. Um, same as my 
Ralph Spearman back in 2001, my converted Gilgoad uh, rocking the shield as well as Igos the spear. Isildur. I do have a spare Elendil actually. Maybe I'll do that in a giveaway someday because I'm pretty sure you can't buy Elendil anymore. So if anyone really wants an Elendil that doesn't have one, hit me up in the comments. Maybe you'll get lucky and I'll mail it out to you. Um, what else have I got? Ah, another rare model, a King of Men. This is one of the men that you can use to represent the ring wraiths prior to their corruption. But I used to use it to represent um, Isildur's brother. Menendil, I think, off the top of my head, something like that. Menendil sounds right. Menendil, oh, it's been too long. I know his son was Vanendil. What else have I got from that time period? Well, yeah, there's more high elves, of course, with spears and that kind of thing. Ah, oh, well, okay. What about the Fellowship of the Ring? This is the original white metal fellowship. I am missing one model, however, Strider. His sword and that broke off years ago, um, and I think he might have been thrown out. Horrible crime, I know. Jeez, what else, what else, what else? Okay. Frodo. Uh, Merry, I think. Pippin. Legolas. Sam. So, apart from the missing Aragorn, that is the original White Metal Fellowship that came out in 2001. Um, Boromir is painted up. I don't know if I can get that to focus, but uh, yeah, Boromir is painted currently. Uh, Gandalf is painted currently. But everything else is, as you can see, is in various stages of being stripped and repainted. Because I, I know I got the bite again a little while back and thought I'd have a crack at repainting it all like an idiot. So let's put that fellowship aside. What else do I have in this box? Well, I haven't put in any of my, um, I have a whole bunch of Rohan characters. A lot of them are out of production as well, of course. So I've got Gandalf the White here. Pretty cool chap. And then there's another Gandalf the White. The, another Gimli. The Legolas from Helm's Deep, which is personally my favourite Legolas, standing up on top of a rock, firing the, firing the bow. Pippin in Gondorian armour. I've got Merry in Gondorian armour. I have another Legolas. This one's from the Return of the King box. Also got the Aragorn from the Return of the King box. These all came out in white metal, as you can tell. This is all white metal, all original stuff. Um, all right. Faramir and Damrod. I don't know if I have Mablung in this box, however. I have a bunch of Gondorian Rangers, all in white metal as well. This is long before they released the Plastic Rangers. So, and then just for some comparison, here's the Plastic Rangers. I know why people doubt that I'm like a massive Lord of the Rings fan, but I really am. So, saddeningly so. So there's a whole bunch of cool stuff right there. Um, Prince Imrahil, I have a whole bunch of metal Knights of Dol and Moroth as well. So there's Imrahil mounted. I've also got Imrahil on foot. Um, give me a moment to find him. So there's Boromir on foot. Boromir of the White Tower on foot. And Boromir with the banner on foot. As you can see the same sculpt with and without shield. So that's cool. Um, Imrahil. There we go. 
Prince Imrahil of Doemroth. And again, I've got a whole bunch of Knights of Minas Tirith and of Doemroth in white metal. I also had a massive force of um, uh, Warriors of Arnor. Well, I say massive, it was only about 30 miniatures, um, as well as Arvadui, the last King of the North, and Melbeth the Seer. But I... They were strong, don't get me wrong. In fact, they are probably under-costed points-wise for what they were capable of, but I had problems with that army, so I sold it to a guy who really wanted the army, and I sold it for a nice price, too. Only about 150 bucks or so. What else have we got in here? Um, ah, there's another one you don't see too often. Uh, that's Halbarad Dunedain. The carries uh, the banner of Arwen Ebenstar for Aragorn. Also in white metal. Aragorn the King, of course. Now I have, still in the process of painting, Aladan and El Rohir. The do forgive me if I'm mangling the names a little bit. I have a thick Australian accent. Both on horseback, armoured. Both on foot. Um, in the Grey Company, as they were called when they went around with the Rangers of the North to aid Aragorn. It's a novel thing, not a movie thing. And of course, I've got them also painted up. These ones are finished, however. Um, I painted them in the Hobbit style colours for Elrond and his household. Because I thought that would make more sense to have that sort of midnight armour. So, there's that. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting through it all. I have a crap load of Guard of the Fountain Court with shields. I thought they were just fucking awesome. I love the head crests. And I bought a stack of them back in the 90s. Not 90s, sorry. 2003. Um, there I am just dropping models on the floor because I can. So there's all Guard of the Fountain Court. I have more as well um, in another box. Again, not for power gaming, I just thought they were fucking cool. Um, the bodyguard rule and all that, yeah. Cool dudes. Uh, okay, here's another rare one. Armoured Halbarad from the uh, Helm's Deep Battle. White metal. Also got Captains of Minas Tirith and Banners. Or original white medals. I also have the replacements, the current fine cast ones which I've never assembled but there they are. So to give you an idea I also have about 150 Warriors of Minas Tirith all painted on foot. So <laughs> I had a massive Minas Tirith army, I'm not lying. It's a spectacular thing to see in action. also have the Knight of White Tower which I think is a fantastic model. Um, even if performance-wise leaves a little bit to be desired sometimes. Uh, the horn bowler as well. Uh, what else? Whole bunch of Citadel Guard. All the ones at the back are with bows. They're all the ones painted black, obviously. And half a dozen with Spears. I've also got Berigond painted, or not quite finished painted. Um, again, don't know if I'll get that into focus or not, but he's sort of two thirds of the way there, and he goes with them obviously. So that's all good stuff basically, and the remaining good stuff I'll just put aside in the box. I've also got like the old white metal um, banners for the knights and that kind of thing. Very heavy models, easy to break. In fact, here's one broken off at the stupid single horse's foot that's got to hold this whole model up and it's white metal. Of course it was going to break. <sighs> First world problems, right? Uh, what else do I have? Well, there's the Troll Chieftain, the Mordor Troll Chieftain. Uh, 
Jeez, I'm going to forget names now. Um, started with a G. The uh, orc that captures Merry and Pippin and runs off and gets killed by the Ents. Sorry, I've forgotten his name. Um, I do have Shagrat and Gorbag as well. The pair. I also have the Orc Shaman. Orc Banner. Um, oh, uh, I have a whole bunch of the fine cast... Um, not the Knights of Minas Morgul, one of these ones, the Numenorian Black Guard or something, I think they're called. Never used them, obviously. They've just been sitting here in fine cast for years. I have five of the named ring rats, the Knight of Umbar, the, I think that's the Shadow Ward, the Tainted, these are all in white metal as well, and then in fine cast I have the High Marshal, I think he's called, and the Witch King. I'd love to get a Witch King in white metal. This is crap cast and it shows. So yeah, um, this is all the characters basically in this box. Anything that's white metal. I have another box, probably about three times the size of that, that's just plastics. Um, lots and lots and lots of warriors, I mean, Asterith. For me, the game sort of peaked around the time of Siege of Gondor and the Battle of Pelennor Fields expansions. From there, it's been steadily downhill because they're just not putting the effort into it. I mean, Forge World's turning things around now, bringing things into the game, but at the same time, it's a bit disappointing for me. There was just so much potential, so much promise. Um... Rather than dwell on what they're doing wrong, I have a wish list of things I'd like to see done with The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit that would make me want to go back and paint all this up. And the first thing is first, go back and do the War of the Last Alliance properly this time. They didn't do it properly the first time, but when the Fellowship of the Ring book released, there was no Sauron, um, the Orcs were all white metal, and they released um, the War of the Last Alliance as a sort of campaign later on down the track. There was a few missions in the original green Fellowship rulebook, but most of it um, came out in White Dwarf when they released the Sauron miniature and that kind of thing. By the way, still have that White Dwarf. Now, the thing with that is, we have a chance to go back and do Numenorean warriors properly. You have a chance to do the High Elves all over again, and you can build towards the Lord of the Rings. You can do all those stories that happen in the middle all over again. Do it once and do it right this time. Instead of doing a little expansion here for the Wayne Riders, the Warriors of Canned, um, or the Easterlings, take it step by step. Do the War of the Last Alliance from the Fall of Celebrimbor, um, and work your way up. Oh, speaking of which, there's another one I have that I didn't mention earlier. Caliborn, with shield and armor. Pretty cool model, actually. Good for anti-magic. Um, yeah, go back, do the High Elves, have Gil-Galad in his prime, maybe release a new miniature for him, because the old one sort of lacks detail. Um, him and Elendil. And do that thing you're doing with the Hobbit now. Because one of the things that used to shit me to tears in The Lord of the Rings was characters like... Any character who died, basically, had zero fate. <laughs> or one fate. So you had like Elendil, who is just an absolute monster in the stories. He is seven foot tall, um, built like a brick shit house. Sauron and uh, was generally afraid of him um, as being a, a, a nasty guy. And Elendil, all he's got going for him is good armor. He has a really good defense value, and he has Narsil which allows him to fight a free heroic combat each turn, and he has a high fight skill, I think of seven, which is monstrous for a man. But it doesn't really reflect him, because he's only got like one fate, three might, three will, something like that. You need to go back and do what you did with the Hobbit, which was characters that die, you didn't just take away all their fate, you just let them fight their normal stat line. Um, take, for example, Azog the Defiler, Bolg, um, But he, what's he, it's completely forgotten. Sorry, Richard Armitage's character, Thorin. Jeez, that's embarrassing. They're, they've got full might, full will, full fate. 
and that's the sort of thing that Elendil should have had. Same with Gil Galad. So go back. They're, who cares if they're 250 point superheroes? I don't. Make them worth their points. Like these, this is the High King of the Noldor. You know, the grandson of Fanor. Um, Elendil. Last of the royal house, um, apart from his sons, I guess, of Numenor. Descended from, directly from the line of Elros. These are heroes in the time of great hero, heroic legends, before mankind has fallen into darkness, before Middle-earth and magic in it has faded away, when the elves are still at the highest of their power. These guys should be badasses, they should be terrifying in the game. And they kind of are, but they're kind of not at the same time. Um, like Boromir, Captain of the White Tower, or Aragorn with Underil, are much scarier in many ways. So that's something that they need to go back and do. And that's what I'd love to see. Go back, do the War of the, um, the original um, War of the Last Alliance, and jeez, make something out of it. I would fucking buy everything for that. <laughs> anyway, anyone wants to talk to me about Hobbit, Lord of the Rings fluff, feel free. I never get to talk about it enough, and I fucking love it, and I loved the game back in the day. Um, tell me what you think of the collection. And again, if anyone's interested in maybe an Elendil, maybe I might do a giveaway sometime. So uh, yeah, white metal, mint condition Elendil from 2001. Maybe someone wants him. Maybe someone doesn't have him. Can't buy him anymore. So, you know, play your cards right. I'm back at the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.